Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 24th of April. Indian Army says 41 terrorists killed post Pulwama attack. Afghan envoy Daudzai calls on politicians to reverse decision to boycott peace jirga. And Sri Lanka attacks could have been avoided, says Deputy Defence Minister. And now for all the details. A top Indian Army commander on Wednesday said the security forces have neutralised at least 41 terrorists in India's Jammu and Kashmir province post the deadly Pulwama attack. The official said most of the slain terrorists belong to Pakistan-based jesh e Mohammed, the group that claimed responsibility for the suicide bombing that killed at least 40 Indian paramilitary personnel in Pulwama in February. A top Indian Army commander in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province said on Wednesday that security forces had gunned down at least 41 terrorists in the region post the deadly Pulwama terror attack. Addressing a press briefing, the official said most of the dead were from Pakistan-based jesh e Mohammed or JEM terror group, which claimed responsibility for the suicide bombing that killed at least 40 Indian paramilitary personnel in Pulwama district of Jammu and Kashmir on February 14th. This year, total of 69 terrorists have been killed, 12 apprehended. Post Pulwama, 41 terrorists have been killed, and out of them, 25 belong to Jashe Muhammad. And out of the 25, 13 were the foreign terrorists, Pakistanis, and 13 were category A plus and above. So basically, we have targeted the Jashe Muhammad leadership. The Indian Army had in March, three weeks after the Pulwama attack, claimed to have gunned down JEM's second commander, Mudassir, who was the main conspirator behind the attack. Tensions had flared up between the nuclear-armed neighbours after India claimed it had incontrovertible evidence of Pakistan's involvement in the Pulwama attack. India has long accused Pakistan of harbouring terror groups to use them as proxy to mount attacks on Indian soil. Pakistan, however, denies the charges. Moving on, the gruesome condition of roads has predominantly been deemed as the most important issue plaguing the growth and development in the illegally occupied region of Gilgit, Baltistan. Locals blame the dilapidated condition of roads has also adversely affected the tourism potential of the region. Gilgit Baltistan is home to some of the most captivating natural sceneries on earth and its serene landscape has the potential of making it a tourist hotspot. However, the sad reality is that the number of tourists flocking the region has declined to a dismal low. The reason being the unscrupulous administration which has been working with stole agenda of exploiting the people in the illegally occupied region. The poor condition of roads in Gilgit Baltistan has not only adversely affected the tourism sector, travelling itself is a difficult task for even the locals. यहां पर एक अरसा दरा से हम देख रहे हैं मुझे गिलगित में रहते हुए तकरीबन 15 12 साल हुए मैं सड़कों की वही खस्ता हालत देख रहा हूं गुजस्ता 15 साल से आ, किसी किस्म की कोई तब्दीली नहीं आ रही है तब्दीली अगर आती है थोड़ी दिनों के लिए आ जाती है अपने मदद आप जो है ये आवाम इस रोड में मिट्टी डाल रहे हैं और सड़क को बेहतर करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं और नाखिस टिकडारों को ठीके दिए जाते हैं जिसको इस नाखिस मटेरियल को इस्तेमाल करके कुछ ही हफ्ते महीनों में वो टूट-फूट का शिकार हो जाता है the gruesome condition of roads has predominantly been deemed as the most important issue plaguing the growth and development in the region. 
Pakistan's apathy towards the region is also visible in the fact that the region doesn't find a space in any government framework and is largely treated as a colony. In news from Afghanistan, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani's special envoy Umar Daudzai has called on politicians to reverse their decision of boycotting the peace shirga. He also said the move, in a sense, is disparaging Afghanistan's tradition and national pride. Days after a number of politicians and political movements boycotted the upcoming Grand Consultative Jirga on Peace in Afghanistan, President Ashraf Ghani's special envoy Omar Dodzai has called on the opposition parties to reverse their decision. Dodzai said the move, in a sense, is disparaging Afghanistan's traditions and national pride. Around 3,000 delegates from across the country will attend the Jirga, which is a grand assembly of Afghans on discussing a unified pathway towards peace. اگر بعضی از حلقات نگرانی داره که خدا نخواسته دولت من حیث دولت از این سو استفاده نکنه این رو بگذارن این قضاوت باز بعد از لوی جرگه کنن اگر بعد از لوی جرگه ارز یا بیشان نشان داد که واقعا دولت خود سو استفاده کن در اون صورت شاید باز مام طرف داره از واشم Afghan presidential candidates including Chief Executive Abdullah Abdullah, former National Security Advisor Mohammad Hanif Atmar and Ahmed Wali Masood and Rahmatullah Nabil are among the prominent Afghan leaders who have so far announced to boycott the peace jirga. Many of them have called the jirga an election campaign and a waste of time. More news from Afghanistan. Afghanistan's Independent Human Rights Commission has announced that there has been a spike in civilian deaths as diplomatic efforts move on to end the 18-year-old conflict. The figures show 19% increase in civilian fatalities compared to a year before. At least 11,000 civilians were killed and wounded in Afghanistan from March 2018 to March 2019, according to statistics by Afghanistan Independent Human Rights Commission or AIHRC, as diplomatic efforts move on to end the 18-year-old conflict. The figures show 19% increase in civilian fatalities compared to a year before, the AIHRC chairperson Seema Samar said at a press conference on Tuesday. بسیار مستقل و خوب شهر افغانستان از طرفین منازعه می خواهد که مندر خوانین به امرالی رو مراد بکنن و خواهان آتش بست هستند به خاطر خط خاتمه دادن و تلفات ملکی و منازعه در افغانستان. According to the AIHRC report, from the total number of 11,000 casualties, 3,032 people were killed while the remaining 8,180 others were wounded. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's Deputy Defence Minister said on Wednesday that the Easter Sunday's bombings could have been avoided had intelligence information been given to the right people. The statement came as the death toll in the blast rose to at least 359 on Wednesday. Sri Lanka's Deputy Defence Minister Ruwan Vijayvardhane said on Wednesday that the recent attacks could have been avoided had intelligence information been given to the right people after the country's president vowed to change his defense chief in the near future. Speaking to media, Vijay Vardhane gave few details on the background of the suspected suicide bombers but said one of the group leaders was killed in the blast at the luxury Shangri-La Hotel. Meanwhile, the Sri Lankan police spokesperson said that authorities had identified eight out of nine suspected suicide bombers. Well, there was definitely a lapse of intelligence and uh, the government has, you know, we have to take responsibility because uh, unfortunately if this, uh, the sharing of, res you know, the uh, of intelligence uh, information had been given to uh, the right people, I think uh, at least uh, this could have been, um, um, whether it was a, could be avoided or even minimized. The death toll from the series of blasts at churches and hotels across Sri Lanka on Easter Sunday has risen to 359 people, the deadliest such event in South Asia's history. Militant group Islamic State claimed the bombings on Tuesday First woman from Punch district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province to crack the coveted civil service exams 
Rihanna Bashir on Tuesday visited a government school and inspired the school children to achieve their dreams, braving all odds. She secured 187th rank in the recently announced Union Public Service Commission Civil Service Examination results. Rihanna Bashir, who became the first woman from Punch District in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province to crack the coveted civil service exams, visited a government school on Tuesday and inspired the school children to achieve their dreams, braving all odds. Rihanna, who hails from remote Salwa village of the district, says that schools in her area need better infrastructure and if she is posted there, she will work to improve the facilities in schools. An MBBS graduate, Rihanna secured 187th rank in the recently announced Union Public Service Commission or UPSC Civil Services examination results. जब मैंने एग्जाम एग्जाम क्वालिफाई किया था तब एक खुशी थी कि फाइनली जो एक जो ड्रीम मैंने रखा है लोगों के लिए काम करने का वो फाइनली अब पूरा हो पाएगा तो तब मैंने ये चीज रियलाइज भी नहीं की थी कि मैं और भी चीजें साइड बाय साइड कर रही हूँ इस एग्जाम को क्वालिफाई करके जैसे कि मुझे बाकियों से ही पता चला कि मैं अपने रीजन की पहली फीमेल हूँ जो ये एग्जाम क्वालिफाई कर रही है UPSC Civil Services Examination is one of the toughest exam to crack in the country. It is conducted every year and the process involves a preliminary round followed by a written test and then a personality test. This year a total of 759 candidates were recommended for appointment in Indian Administrative Service, Indian Foreign Service, Indian Police Service and Central Services. A 69-year-old lone voter living in a village inside Gir Wildlife Sanctuary in India's western Gujarat province cast his vote in the third phase of the general election on Tuesday. The general election in the country began on April 11th and the 7th and the final phase will be held on May 19th. Indian election officials travelled miles inside a deep forest known for a rare breed of Asiatic lions in India's western Gujarat province to ensure that a 69-year-old man leaving there could cast his vote on Tuesday. A four-member team of election officials accompanied by a police personnel travelled about 43 miles on Monday by car to set up a special polling station in Banej, a village inside the Gir Wildlife Sanctuary that houses a single voter named Mahan Bharat Das Guru Darshan Das. A temple priest who has lived in the village for two decades, Darshan Das has not missed an election since 2002 and he cast his vote on Tuesday by walking nearly half a mile to where the polling station was set up. I live here in the village and there is a place and the government is very expensive for one vote. I have voted for 100-100 years and I have आपको सबको यही सलाह देता हूं कि आप सब अपना मूल्य वोट कीजिए और 600 टका मत होना चाहिए सब जगह से रिजल्ट ये आए कि भाई 100 टका मत हुआ जैसे बानेज में हुआ वैसा सब जगह से 100 टका का रिजल्ट आना चाहिए the seven-phase general election, which began on April 11th, is spread over 39 days, with the final phase on May 19th. Votes would be counted on May 23rd, and the results would be announced the same day. Scores of people on Tuesday gathered to pay homage to the soldiers who were killed during the Anglo-Manipur War in India's northeastern Manipur province. Kongjom Day is observed annually to remember the sacrifices of the soldiers in the last battle of independence against the British. Scores of people on Tuesday gathered to pay homage to the soldiers who were killed during the Anglo-Manipur War in Thaubal district of India's northeastern Manipur province. The 120th Kongjom War Memorial Day was observed at a hillock where the war memorial is situated. Floral tributes were paid to the freedom fighters and special prayers were also performed for them. A drama based on the war was also staged by a group of artists on the occasion. Uh, we are commemorating the 128 Kongjom War Memorial Day this year. It is to encourage our younger generations to be like uh, courageous in all terms and remember the sacrifice for this uh, very uh, proud uh, Manipur state. 
Kongjom Day is observed annually on April 23rd to pay tributes to the brave soldiers of Manipur who made sacrifices in the last battle of independence, popularly known as Kongjom War, against the British on April 23rd, 1891. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.